Some of the most talented men on the face of the earth. Let's just say it's the cameos and Park Avenue coming together. Thanks to my dear friend, Joe Caparella Sr. Bringing everybody together. And allow me to introduce who I have with me this evening. We'll start with Mr. Chris Cerullo, currently with the cameos. Joe Caparella Sr., the person that helped me put this event together this evening, formerly of Park Avenue, formerly of Jersey Sound, has sung with the cameos, you name it, he's done it. The legendary Johnny Bazalone, currently with the cameos, formerly of Jersey Sound. Tony Ficino, currently with Park Avenue. And Bobby D'Angelo, also currently with Park Avenue and also formerly of Jersey Sound. Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I have the opportunity to have these incredibly talented musicians all together, all in the same place, all at once. So with that said, I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of kick things off, and you know, Joe, maybe you can start off help walk us through the history here in terms of, you know, how you got started, and you know, and eventually the eventual formation of Park Avenue, and so on and so forth. Kind of walk us through sure. the history here. Sure. Um. First of all, I did a little singing when I was a teenager and actually stopped singing um, professionally until I was in my early 50s. At that time, I got a call from uh, Mike Feedy and Phil Bruno from Jersey Sound. Uh, Bobby was singing with them and Johnny was singing with them. And uh, they asked me if I wanted to stand in. Well, lo and behold, when I, when I went to sing with Jersey Sound, I found out that Johnny had moved on to the cameos, and it was actually Johnny's place I'd be taken. So me, Bobby D., Mike Feedy, great friend of mine from Sidewalk Symphony years ago, I'm sure everybody knows him. Absolutely. And uh, George Kistner, another guy that's sure. been singing forever. We were Jersey Sound for six, seven years. Uh, at after that time, we decided uh, we wanted to, the singers in Jersey Sound wanted to take a little different venture. Okay. Do some more uh, '70s, touch on the '80s a little bit, and even go back a little to the '40s. Four mm -hmm. Aces, uh, four freshmen. So when we left, we started doing that. We did that for a few years. At that time, Johnny gave me a call asking me. If, if, if cameos ever needed me, would I be willing to sing with them? So I, I sang with them. And uh, Tony came in when Mike Feeney decided he didn't want to sing anymore. Tony came in and replaced him, and we were Park Avenue for a while. Now, since then, I re that's three years going on four. I'm retired now. Bobby, Tony, Mike Caputo, and John DeMotto form Park Avenue now. Johnny. Chris, Danny Ugarty, they front the cameos, still have the same musicians they've had for years. So that's where they're at now. And we've been getting together down here, doing sometimes with Johnny, sometimes with Mike Carnell, another former member of Carnell. I finally got invited, which was nice. Yeah, well, you weren't busy <laughs> yeah. once. Yeah. So that's about where we all are right now. And, uh, and, here, and here you all are. And of course, you know, um, I know you, you have told me, you know, you and Johnny, of course, go way back to uh, Barringer, graduated from high school, the school legendary yeah. Barringer High School, class of 71. I mean, you guys have been all over in terms of Park Avenue, the cameos. I mean, you guys have performed in so many different venues all over the state, uh, you know, all over the state. It's, and I've been to many of your, of your shows. Um, you know, for the most part, and uh, of course, it's, it's a, there's nothing like, you know, a night out, um, you know, dinner and dancing, listening to the cameos, and or Park Avenue. I think I attended that one show at the Chandelier where you guys, yeah. Yeah. Few years ago, you guys did a joint show, which yes. was absolutely phenomenal. That I was had the great. pleasure of taking yeah. my beautiful wife, 
We had a wonderful night. I mean, it was a, it was a tremendous night. I emceed that show. I remember. Yes. I remember. And I remember you guys performing at the Belleville Just a Party event yep. uh, on, yes. on multiple years. And uh, I remember a couple, you filled in. And I remember you, you attended and you filled in and sung a few songs right in the middle of yes. Franklin Avenue, right by when the they, chandelier. When, when I'm there seeing the cameos, they always call me up. Always. And when I go see Park Avenue, always. they always call me up. Always. So just like... It's, always, uh, it's a family. Exactly. Yeah. And just like in, you know, uh, Al, Al Pacino and The Godfather 3, just when you thought you were out, they pull you back. Right, right, right. Right. I don't mind singing the song or two. It's it's the, the setting up, the breaking down, yeah. the rehearsals. No, we deal with that. You don't have yeah, to Yeah, that's that fine. Yeah. That's, you that's put the way your, I like You it. put your time in, and, and now you get to to kind of enjoy the, the, the benefits of, of your great talent by, you know, doing it on a more of a leisure type of basis with the setup you have here and the guys coming over and um, you know I want to thank you all again for being able to come together to, you know tonight uh, for this special occasion and you know we talked a little bit about you know you guys having performed all you know all all different places over the the past you know 10 15 years what, what would you say has been the best venue that you've performed in thus far we'll start with you Chris it, for me, that's easy. It was probably the PNC Art Center in Homeville. And, and, that's a that, place. and that was thanks to John Bazelone for, for uh, being influential in, in getting us there. You know, we, we've been there maybe four or five times. Yeah, John, yes. I mean, I think our biggest crowd might have been 7,000 people. 8,000. 8,000. Oh, I'm sorry, 8,000. There you go. So I would say that would probably be the biggest uh, venue that we've ever, uh, ever done. And... Uh, it was tremendous, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm with the group, you know, 14 years since 2006, and uh, I, 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 you know, I love it. Time it's, flies uh, when you're having fun. Absolutely, right? it's great. You know, and now I'm 49. I'm like, uh, I was young when I did it. What? 49. 49. When I was 49, I still had pimples. <laughs> see, see, I get invited. This is what I deal with when I get invited over to Joe's house. Not it. This this is a fuck. This is a. I enjoy group harmony. I love. I mean, this group right here to be able to sing with, with this group is just a, is, is an honor. I, I I started as an acapella singer. It's my first love, and uh, of course I'm with a nine piece band now with, with cameos and we're doing pretty well. And but acapella is my favorite. You know that group harmony. Uh, oh, there's nothing like it. Yeah, there's I love nothing it. like it. And you know, and to, and to be around you know nice people is 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 important too. That that's you know it's a nice feeling. I can imagine and memorable experiences I yeah. had for sure. And Joe, how about for you, for yourself? Uh, what would you say was the best venue you you? Well, it wasn't the PNC Art Center, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I asked Johnny if he could get us down, and he said absolutely not. <laughs> no. My favorite. <laughs> My, I'm just kidding. My favorite job, and it involves him. We were playing at the the Mud Hall in Nutley, mm -hmm. Full House, another in legendary summer. place. Yes, the Mud Hall. And Park Avenue was doing their thing as usual. We got Johnny to come up. He did a uh, Dupree song with us. As soon as he sat down, the lead singer from the Stylistics, E. Van Brown, was there. Wow. And he came up. And we backed him up on the song, and to me, that was my my favorite. Well, I can only imagine what a, what a thrill that must that have been. Fun. John, where where to begin? I mean, oh. the venues you've been at. I mean, I mean, what comes to mind? Well, I, I'd have to say, like Chris, the PNC Art Center was one of uh, our group's biggest shows. And what was nice about that, Anthony, it wasn't us to get glory. We saw how the people enjoyed it so much. Yeah. After our first song, they got up, they gave us a standing ovation. But the biggest point of that show that I can remember, and you could pull it up on, on YouTube and everything, mm. is the first time we sang Proud to Be an American. And what we did towards the end of the song, as we were ending the song, which was the best part of the song, oh. We had one of my favorites. curtains open up, and we had a 50 by 40 size American flag. And I'll tell you one quick story to just to. When Danny brought. 
just to agree, no, I got a better one. Uh, after the show, of course, we were all saying hello and, and thank you and all this. And we were honored. We were honored to be there. And this little old lady worked her way through the crowd and said to me, excuse me, uh, I just want to tell you something. And I said, sure. She said, I want you to know, you see that man over there in the wheelchair? She said, that's my husband. She goes, and when you guys were doing that song, my husband, after 20 years, asked me if he could stand up during the song, Proud to be an American. Now, the, the ironic thing is I watched that. I saw him looking up at her and saying, get me up, get me up. And she cried like a baby. She said, thank you. I want to thank you guys for what you did. And to me, at that point, I could have played in Shea Stadium. It didn't mean that meant more to me mm. than any show I've ever did in my life. Mm. That's just one story I could tell you. Well, how's the joke say? I got a million of them. But that's the most important thing. I'll never forget that till the day I go home to the Lord. That's just my, that's one story of many. Go ahead, Ann, please. Great story. Mm. I mean, that's tremendous. Absolutely tremendous. And Tony, one of the most memorable uh, venues we used to play at was the old veranda which is not there anymore but that was always a lot of fun but the other one is what joe's talked about at the mud hole in nutley with the uh, yvonne brown and johnny coming up and singing with us I've, I've always considered it an honor and a pleasure to be able to sing with such talented guys and i'm eternally grateful to joe for asking me to sing with the band even though a year later he left <laughs> <laughs> well, i always wondered if he left because i wasn't quite you know I was working on him as my replacement. I yeah. just didn't tell him. But that's about it. Bobby, how about you? What what venue comes to mind? Yeah, I've never been there, but they mentioned uh, Muddle. Muddle, yeah. yeah. Uh, I became good friends with E Band from seeing him in Lindhurst performing. So we kept in touch with each other, went out to dinner a few times. And I finally had Coaxman to come down when we were at the Muddle. He says, I'll be down. I said, Are you sure? He says, Yes. I said, Will you do a song? He says, Yes, I will. So. When we got ready for him, I called him up. Of course, <clears throat> with Oakland Johnny around, we always call him up. And even Chris, mm -hmm. you know, we like that, you know, we got together. Well, if Chris ever time. comes to see us, <laughs> we'll call him up. He came a few well, times. Well, the fact that you're in your house, maybe now I'll go up. So, we talked about the venues, where you guys have been. So now, if I can ask, what venues come to mind where you'd like to eventually have the opportunity to perform? Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I, Carnegie Hall, Carnegie um, Hall. Madison Square Garden. It's uh, the biggest. The Mecca. The Mecca. Yeah, yeah. It, it, I, I think just because it has that aura uh, about it, you know? But I think that we, we, we did play one of the best venues uh, in our career was at the PNC Art Center that John was in, yep. influential on in having us. But, you know, um, is it realistic? Probably not, but... That would be a, a, You never know. Idea. You know, with that said, I mean, you know, we could go on and on about all the, the, the stories that you guys can tell about the shows you've done, the songs you've sung, the people you've sung to. Um, if I can ask this, what would you say um, has been like, the, the, one of, like some of the greatest influences to each of you in terms of your passion for, for music and, and so forth? Well, to me, Act to, to tell you the truth, uh, growing up, I was really a hard rock and roller. This this kind of music that we're doing now, doo-wop and duprees and uh, you know vogues and the Letterman, yeah. really wasn't my my thing. I grew up with you know hard rock, but I think it's because of the uh, the talent and because of the harmonies. I, I really love harmonizing, like uh, Chris a cappella yeah. or barbershop quartet or anything where there's a lot of harmonies i really appreciate that mm. the uh, the blend of the voices together in, in harmony mm -hmm. so that's why I, I really enjoy it matter of fact when i got in park avenue they said well you're going to sing this song i i never heard this song before <laughs> so i had to learn something that's great even though you know some of the stuff you may have heard on the radio but yeah. some of the stuff they had me sing like uh, fools fall in love i said you know 
what's that? They said, well, you're going to sing it, so you better <laughs> so, so You didn't have much of a choice. Right. Throw it right. to right. the wolves. I'm sure. sure. Quick. And I learned it, and we, and we did it. Quick. And now I, I enjoy doing it. But like I said, it really, right. growing up was not my kind of music. was really more hard hard rock. You right? enjoy listening to more hard rock now? Yes. So, so. Well, I don't, there's a lot of times I don't really listen to music to sit down and, like, actually listen. Yeah. Because most of the time when I listen, I want to either sing along, I want to yeah. pick up my guitar and play along with it and stuff like that. And if I don't have the time, like I'm in the car, I don't listen to music unless now if we're trying to learn a song and I'm trying to get the harmony parts down, to I'll have out. the music yeah. on and I'll, I'll rehearse, you know, for, for the song we're going to do. But most of the time, I, I don't like music like in the background. Like people like to have music playing in the background. I don't like that because I, when I do listen, I want to really listen and, and get into it. So I don't really do that. But now that we're doing the doo-wop and the oldies and stuff, I enjoy it and I enjoy, you know, being that, you know, we're doing it together and harmonizing and, and having it sound good. And that's that's a good feeling. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful, wonderful. Bobby. Yeah, as I say, I started, when I was a kid, I started, I like, I always liked, loved harmony. I always played records and there were groups. And uh, that was the thing, and my older brother, he sang with a couple of guys in the neighborhood, you know, and they did acapella. So I started doing some of that with some of my friends, you know, just, and we kind of showed them up. But, uh, <laughs> well, but friendly they, competition, yes, right? But it was good. Then my mother at the time loved Engelbert, so I started singing a lot of his stuff. But then I went right back to the harmony with you know, the group stuff, and I've loved it ever since. That's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I can't stress it enough. It's it's an absolute honor to, 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 to meet with all of you tonight, to be here. And I tell you, I think it's time for you guys to do what you guys do best. And I know Sweet. folks <laughs> folks, if you're you're ready for some good music, right. Make fun of them. these wonderful, talented gentlemen are gonna perform a couple of songs for us as part of this special edition of Cess's Choir. Apparently, you're about to be given one heck of a treat. As we stroll along together, holding hands, walking all alone, we so in love are we two that we don't know what to do, so in dead, so in love. talented individuals and I thank them so very much once again for the honor of being with them tonight for this very special edition of Cess's Corner. I urge you all to hit like on this YouTube video, 
please subscribe to my YouTube channel, Anthony M. Sessa, so you can enjoy this episode of Sessa's Corner and all of the prior episodes and all of the great upcoming episodes to come. So I thank Joe Cap, Tony, thank you for having Bobby, us. Johnny, Thanks, and Chris. Thank, thank you. you all. Once again, this has been an absolute honor. And I wish you all a great, great night. God bless. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys. Thank we you all want to thank Anthony, Anthony for having us and for coming down. And thanks, everybody, for watching. We love you.